welcome, welcome, welcome back to Film Bluffs Pod, new and improved, not blocked on YouTube version. Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody in our live studio audience here today. Oh, abrupt stop. Abrupt stop. All of those claps were the voices in Cade's head, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. They all gathered together today. They all gathered here together today to kick off our very first episode. Uh, film loves pod we do have a long lost episode that we recorded before of the last format that we were going to try to do but we got blocked by the big time (laughs) film studios so we're pretty much famous yeah we're pretty much famous now we're pretty much famous it was a big studio too yeah like they reached out to us and we're like yeah you can't do this they were like we love the podcast don't get us wrong like it was amazing the content was incredible yeah they're like you can either come here and replace jimmy fallon yeah or you're gonna have to take your YouTube video down, and we were like, "Man, and I was, I was like, can I bring YY?" And they said, no. "No." And I said, "I'm gonna have to stay in San Angelo. Yeah. I'm sorry." And and plus, you know, Jimmy Fallon's pretty cool, so like, we don't yeah, really want to take his this, job. Do so. a solid. Let Jimmy Fallon keep his job. Yeah. We'll stay here with YY. Best of both worlds. So we had to take our video down. Those were the only options. Come here, be famous, be rich. You know, you're super funny. You're super talented. We love the show. We love your opinions. But sorry, it's too good and it's too threatening. You're going to have to delete it. Yeah. So we're here and we've decided to take a new format and just talk about our favorite things about film and TV. Emphasis on the TV because we do love movies and we will hit on movies. But we mostly are huge fans of TV shows. I know that ever since I was a kid, I have been obsessed with tv shows me too starting back in the beginning with disney channel disney Favorite channel disney channel show on three one wait one two three zach and cody hannah oh, montana <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> mine was zach and cody mine was hannah montana because i love sweet music. life is zach and cody but yeah not on deck on deck was eh. meh yeah. yeah all about the hotel life i do prefer the hotel years it was I. I and that's where my love of TV started. Yes. Was definitely on the Disney Channel. I and paused ABC there Family. because I was ABC Family. I don't hear that name anymore. It's all freeform. Uh, I did not know about that for a while. I was really? Like, what the frick is freeform? <laughs> um, I paused there for a minute because I was trying to decide between Hannah Montana and Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah, I really, I really love me some Selena Gomez. Place. I was banished from that show. I'm still not allowed. I asked my mom, and she said. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. So started there. And then, of course, naturally it transitioned into like Seventh Heaven and Reba, Psych. Mom. Reba. Those were the shows I binged, almost binged. We'd watch, you know, like marathons of them on USA or ABC Family or whatever. USA. CMT. Just a quick shout out to USA. They always had the best shows. Shout out to USA because you did not block us. No, USA. You didn't try. But you didn't block us. USA is where I watched all of NCIS growing up. I loved NCIS uh, growing up. We were big, big, big psych and monk ah. kids. We loved it. We USA loved has. They're the best. But let's go. Favorite TV shows, top three right now in your roster. You go first. Uh, Walking Dead. Full House. Big Bang Theory. That's good. I'm going to go One Tree Hill, mm. The Office, New Girl. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You got to mix it up. It's like it's One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill is my drama. Yeah. One Tree Hill is my lifeline. It's just, this is the drama of the life you never lived and never will. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> the Office is my very first show I ever loved and binged. Very first ever that I just watched, watched, watched. Which by binged back in the day, I binged One Tree Hill and The Office <laughs> by going to Hastings and renting DVDs. Amen. I didn't rent them. I just bought them. <laughs> well, I wasn't rich. <laughs> I guess you were. Only on no. Black Friday, I would buy them. My dad just bought my love. <laughs> Oof. There's that. Yeah. On Black Friday, I would go to Hastings and clean up, man. Which is probably why they're out of business. Probably. Because literally, I have stacks and stacks of TV shows. I own over 356, I think, just movies. I can never just movies. count my TV shows. I have them. I have I have my movies organized. I have TV in a, shows in a I notes don't file like. In my, yes, I do too. I have movies that I've never seen because yep. I would just go to Hastings and buy like the used, like after they like, they the rentals yep. that they had and they put them up for sale, yep. buy them used, 
boom. And then yeah. I literally have my whole bookshelf like of movies Absolutely. that I've watched. And then up above on top is a stack of movies I've never watched. And there's some in there that I, like have been there since Hastings was yep. going strong. <laughs> strong Hastings. Man, I loved Hastings. And the funny thing is, is we did not know each other when Hastings was in existence. No. I wonder if we were ever in there at the same time. Oh, we guarantee. Guarantee. I was in guarantee. there at least. I'm not joking you. At least, at least twice a week. Yeah. Bare minimum for me once a week because I was just busy a lot with sports and stuff and, and the church. But at least once a week, we'd go usually Friday nights. If we didn't have a game, if we had a game, then we'd go Saturday nights. And we would go and just literally just sit there and look at all the TV shows, look at all the instruments, look at all the books, get a frozen hot chocolate or a regular hot chocolate, depending on the on the weather outside. Hastings was the freaking place, man. They really were. And they had all their movies like categorized. So like oh if I'm looking for a specific gosh. movie, I go, I know where to go. Uh, it was so amazing. I remember I will growing never up, I love forgive them for going the cartoon Teen Titans. Like the DC show. Yep, I yep. loved Teen Titans and I always wanted to have the complete series on DVD. And I got all the way to one, two, and three. Just never got four and five. And then afterwards could not find it for years. Like it was a huge thing in my life. It was a pandemic in my life that I could not find <laughs> seasons four and five. And then I was like, it was before like I was like, I had my own money and I bought stuff on like mm -hmm. eBay and Amazon and stuff like that. And so it was, I was always hoping to run into them at a store. And then one day I went into Hastings and happened to go into the children and family section and found a used, brand new uh, Teen Titans season five. So I bought it. I was did like, you ever find season four? I did. I ended up, uh, I think I had my dad order it on Amazon. Nice. Like, and now I go to Walmart and they have like the complete series on DVD. I'm That's just like, thing. cool. It's <laughs> part of me that loves like things to look good and nice and all together loves the complete series altogether. Yes. But part of me really loves having the individual seasons and then you look at it and you see their pictures are all different in each one and then you go and yeah. all the all the DVDs have their pictures on them and they're so nice and neat. I, I love them. I don't think I have a complete series. Like, like, like a anything? complete series set. I uh -huh. have complete series. I have complete series and then I also like I have all of the Parks and Rec individual seasons and then i have the box set because they come all together and they look so nice same with the office i have all of them i really wanted the how i met your mother one because it comes there's like this running joke in how i met your mother that it's like the playbook and so it's like all of barney's like plays to get girls or whatever and so the whole show comes in like a giant book that nice. looks like like the playbook but it's the entire show i think i have a few more that are the entire series but those are the ones I can think of. I don't have that much. I think the only, it's like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, no. I, I was looking. I looked at, uh, I think it was Target, and which I, I, I won't ever, I won't do it. I won't make myself do it because I have the complete series. I won't just, I won't, I, as much as I want to, I won't do it just to have the complete series mm -hmm. set. But uh, the Big Bang series set is like 109 bucks, which isn't horrible for a complete well, series, can but. You can you stream Big Bang anywhere? HBO? Yeah, it's on HBO. HBO. Yeah, but I still sometimes for my favorite shows like to have the DVD yeah. just in case they well yeah, they go when off sometimes. when um, during the storm and people were losing like internet. Yes. Me and Lyndon were watching all DVDs all the time because oh, we didn't have any Wi-Fi. I actually, no, I watched. Um, I think it was Walking Dead. <laughs> I watched my DVDs because I have one through. Eight. Some so I shows nine, I specifically and, and like to watch on DVD. Now, I like to watch Chuck on DVD. Now, once Walking Dead's over, you'll well, get what, that box. I set. may have to get that box set. Plus, because I already have the rest of them, I may have to just go ahead and In get nine, ten, eleven yeah, individually. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know that One Tree Hill has a box set. I should look into that because I have all of them anyway. But I should get that. I feel like that's a pretty big show. I feel like there's a box set. Somewhere. Probably. I do love One Tree Hill. And we were talking earlier about how One Tree Hill and Walking Dead have crossover actors. Well, one actor, one actress. We're talking Austin Nichols, baby. Later seasons of One Tree Hill. I don't know when he's on Walking Dead. He's on season five through seven. Five through seven. And then, which he's on seasons six through nine nice. of One Tree Hill. So he's a later in the game kind later of Later in the game. Yeah, he doesn't like to come in in the no, beginning. No, no, no. Too risky. Austin Nichols. And then... Um, Hillary Burton Morgan. Hillary Burton Morgan. Hillary Burton on One Tree Hill. Peyton Sawyer. She comes in for one episode. Peyton you clarified. Her name is Peyton Sawyer. Oh, that's. I was like, who's that actress? I was like, it sounded actually. No, her name is it, Peyton okay, Sawyer. Okay, I was like, but it was funny. I'm. 
I'm pretty sure there might be like a Peyton and a Sawyer on, on Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. So oh, I was, I was. That's thinking, funny. I was no, her name is Peyton actress. Sawyer on Wintry Hill. Ah, okay. Hillary Burton Morgan. Sense. Hillary Burton Morgan, and she was only on one episode of Walking Dead in the season ten finale, but she's like a big character. That, that's the thing with Walking Dead is you can be on one episode and become a huge character. Yeah, not really Wintry Hill. You have to be on a few episodes you have to be, to on be few episodes. big on One Tree Hill. And then they just rake you over the coals even more. Even more. <laughs> and that's why we love One Tree Hill. Cade's never seen it. We're going to get him to watch it. Don't you worry. Hopefully, We're going to get him to watch it. Hopefully with, hopefully by next Monday, I will have watched it. Not this coming Bro, I'm Monday. I'm already on season two. Really? Wow. I'm already on season two. And I've been trying to slow myself down. <laughs> But season two is not great. So I'm kind of like ready to be done with it. But I'm also don't want to move on that fast because I don't want it to be over. That's my least favorite part of like the shows that I like, even like Walking Dead. Love it. I've watched it a million times. But there's always that one season. I'm just like, what season is it for Walking Dead? For me, it's four. I quit watching Walking Dead in season four. I was wondering if you were (laughs) going to say season four because I stopped watching Walking Dead mid season four ish. Somewhere in there. It's one of the so. It's weird because like the first half of this of the season is like kind of one story and it like I feel like all the other seasons like even the first because they split them up into two parts Mm -hmm. and I feel like all of those like even the first half builds into what the main story is for the the rest of the season Mm -hmm. that one doesn't Mm -hmm. and it's like they take some random like they have like a pandemic like a a pandemic inside of a pandemic they have a flu uh, in sweep, season four yeah sweep the prison that they're staying at and so it's all about like getting medicine for these people and then and then like the last three episodes change like brings in this other which is actually builds up to the rest of the storyline but it changes the story for the rest of the season and so it's just weird like i'm just i, I always dread getting through the first half of season four the back half's not bad but it's still not my favorite season to get through for me, it's definitely overall, okay, season nine of One Tree Hill should have never been made, and I will stand on that ground. Sometimes I will literally finish watching this shit series after season eight, because season eight ends perfectly. It is the perfect end to a show, to that show. I would explain it to you, but I don't want to <laughs> give anything away. But it ends almost exactly- We'll come back and talk about it, it once i It ends almost exactly how it begins, like scene-wise perfect they come back for half a season for season nine they do 13 episodes i think and absolutely ruin it so i don't regard season nine to exist and i don't (laughs) really think anyone should watch it other than season nine season two is the worst after that probably season five is one of the worst writing seasons i don't super love season five but the rest of them knock out if you could rank all of one tree hill seasons could you yeah, let's go. Okay. Season one, because it's the first, right? Season one. Season three, right up there with season one. Mm. Almost perfect. The only thing is that it's not the first. But I would say, writing-wise, season three is better than season one. So let's go season three at the top. Season three, season one, season eight, seven, six, five. No, way! I forgot season four. Season four goes between eight and seven. Let's do that. Season three, one, eight, four, seven, six, five, two. Hmm. Nine doesn't exist, nine but doesn't nine exist. goes at the end. <laughs> I think it, I may. If it did, it would go at the end. I think I got all the numbers, but I would say that's about it. Season three of One Tree Hill is so good that's, if you, that's that's funny because for the longest time season three of walking dead was my favorite season three if you could have a strong season three i think you'll make it far because for sure. you're you're getting people on for a long time mm-hmm. if you can push through to season three you've so got people like attached season one is that it's still building it's like getting to know all the characters and everything season two is like all right we've known we know the characters now let's start yeah. pushing the story season three you know both Yep. So you should yeah. be able to. And, so and you have a strong... more, more of the writers are comfortable. They're not mm-hmm. as likely to get pushed off of series. Yes. You know, of like, oh, man, we're pushing you off network. Most of the time, TV shows get cut either season one or season five off of network shows. Because if they make it 100, they usually try to call it around 100 sometimes in season five. If you can make it a season three, that's like a pretty comfortable spot. I would say season three of The Office is really good also. See, I, seasons three I haven't, and I haven't four. seen the, the office in a minute so i have to i love seasons three and four those are really good hmm. but 
Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say something about One True Hill. Dang it. I don't remember, but season three, strong. Season four, they start really jumping the sharks, man. They start really pushing what you think is believable. <laughs> And then in the later years when they're adults, they're really pushing what is believable. <laughs> but I do love season eight. It's so good. Season seven's pretty good. They introduce a lot of new characters because some characters leave at the end of season six. So then it's like you kind of spend season seven like getting used to some new people. And then season eight, you're comfortable again. So, I like, a lot of people don't like it. I like when new characters are introduced. Yeah. I if love If they're it. introduced well. Introduced well, yeah. yes. I don't like introducing a character just for the sake of introducing a new character Mm -hmm. but if they if they actually bring something to the table yeah i love that because there are two characters introduced in season two of one tree hill that are siblings that are the worst arc (laughs) of pretty much the whole entire show the worst most annoying arc nothing to do with who they're trying to make them be because i understand that and i'm whatever do your thing but the way they wrote them so frustrating so frustrating frustrating. you just don't have time to attach to them and then they're gone and then just they're trying to like force you to love this character and you're like no i don't want to do that that's the one thing my one thing i'm not the biggest fan but i also get it with walking dead is they they'll bring in a lot of one season characters and they have arcs throughout the entire season like they're building their Mm -hmm. character throughout the entire season and then by the end of the season dead and so i love that about new girl they hardly ever do that. Only <laughs> one time on New Girl do they introduce a character for one season only. That's what uh, Breaking Bad's the same way. I'm Breaking Bad. Big that's, Bang. That's another good show. But I've never seen that one. Big Bang. Um, uh, is they literally, they have the original five. And then in season, I think, I think Bernadette comes in season three, maybe two. Uh, but anyway, Bern- like Bernadette, she comes in at one season and then it's kind of recurring and then amy comes in i think the following season and then after that they're both main for characters the for the rest of the series and that's and that's 11 seasons 11 seasons 11 yeah seasons. well yes i think well, so 10 seasons? 12 oh 12 seasons. 12 seasons more. Yeah. 12 seasons wow that's a long time mm-hmm. that's a long time i love the way the office is mockumentary style because new characters come and go and they're sometimes there and they're sometimes not there and the only ones that really stick are like very few characters Mm -hmm. what i love about new girl is that there's like hardly ever new characters that are not just like dating arcs Mm -hmm. you know because like oh justin long comes in for a couple episodes in season one and then Megan Fox comes in and she does a whole season. That's the one I was talking about. Only one time I think someone comes in and does one season arc because Zoe Deschanel was having right. her baby. Yeah. So she was in jury duty, which I thought was a pretty good cover up for having a baby. But. That's funny, though. Because, I mean, that's very realistic. I mean, you go to jury duty, you're gone for a while. Yeah, for if a were, while. If you're on if you the jury on duty of case, the Johnny Depp child, you were screwed. Man, I <laughs> i would have i would have loved what i would give the <laughs> fact that we were sh- live streaming that youtube we might as well have been the jury we should have <laughs> man we gave up days weeks months for that trial dude you want to know sometimes there are things like i'll do that i will remember remember i'll be like what was i doing last time i was like doing this action like what was i listening to or watching i remember like I was watching something very specific and i was vacuuming over there by the dream team lounge And the last time I vacuumed over there at the Dream Team Lounge, like in depth, was after I was working on a project over there during the Johnny Depp trial. (laughs) And I was like, I was watching somebody tell a story and I was remembering the story. And I was like, that was a freaking Johnny Johnny Depp Depp trial. trial. We were so sucked into that Johnny Depp. podcast right there. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that was good. That was good. It was it was all you, me and Caitlin, both all three of us were just every time I go in the office, she was like rewatching like the trial from the day before. So I I bought YouTube (laughs) premium just to play the trial at double time. That's commitment right there. I would never pay 15 bucks for. No, I used the free trial and then I was done. Oh, see, I'd have to pay for it (laughs) because I need to use my trial. (laughs) I think maybe I paid for it for like a little bit and then I was done with it. I think it's time to hear from a sponsor. I think it is time. Let's see who our sponsor is. You pick the first one. I'll pick the second one. Today's sponsor is... 
Curmudgeon. Pazuki. Curmudgeon Pazuki. Do you ever just wake up and you're being such a curmudgeon? Never. I feel like you are. Just like an old man who's grumpy. I wake up pretty good, but as the day goes on. Oh, later in the day, you find yourself being a curmudgeon. Uh, later in the day, I find. Feeling I, I curmudgeon. Be a kind of I don't know how to person. use that word correctly. I'm going to say you're being a curmudgeon. If you find yourself being a curmudgeon throughout the day, I would highly suggest that you have a pazuki. A pazuki. And a pazuki at any time of day. A pazuki, man, that thing comes out in a little pan. Little it's pan. a cookie. Cookie. Ice cream on the top. The ice cream on top. Perfect. What time of day do you want your pazuki go? About six o'clock in the evening. <laughs> six o'clock in the evening. Not six oh one. Not five fifty nine. Six on the dot. Six on the dot. I would love a pazuki about nine p.m. Mm. End of the day, nightcap pazuki. Nightcap pazuki. That's what pizuki. I'm into. Yeah, let's do it. I would highly suggest that you go down and get yourself a pazuki, especially if you wake up feeling a little curmudgeon. Especially if you wake up feeling. Curmudgeon. Make sure you use our code FILMBLUFF10 to get $10 off a $5 pazuki. That's right. Use our code, get $5 and a pazuki. And no longer be a curmudgeon. And no longer be feeling curmudgeon. Curmudgeon-y. And we're back to our regularly scheduled program. So as we were saying, um, I don't know what we were saying, but <laughs> we were just talking about the different types. And so let's talk about Full House. Let's do a bit on Ooh, Full House. Full I think that's the only one we haven't touched on that we listed. So I was thinking about that one. So we were talking. We were just talking about like how both, you know, Walking Dead, One Tree Hill, and then um, the Office, the, uh, the Office, and then. Uh, big bang kind of mm -hmm. and new girl the office new girl Big yeah. Bang, all similar yeah all similar but they all those four individuals like specifically bring in new characters mm -hmm. all the time but yours was new girl who really yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. um full house never really did that either hardly ever I yeah mean, honestly once becky was in because becky didn't start off and becky didn't start off in the beginning she came in as a recurring in season two and then not they, till season two interesting I mm -hmm. really thought she and then season. They started dating in se like dating dating in season three. They get married in season four, and so it wasn't until season three when she was a main character. Does Steve come in in season one? Oh yeah, I forgot about Steve. No, Steve comes in about five. Season five. Mm -hmm. And so then, then oh, I, I forgot. DJ starts at like ten years old or yeah. something like that. And so I think okay, Steve is probably the only other one that yeah. comes in and is wow. uh, like a new character, but. But I mean, Becky enters the family mm -hmm. actually into and the then, full house. Makes yeah. it a full And then Gibbler house. was Kimmy was like a recurring all the way through. Yeah, yeah. She was all she was from season one, but she wasn't a main until I think season five as well. Wow. She was only recurring from. So then she on. started just butting herself in every day. Yep. She really just made her character. Let me tell you, life. nothing imprinted me on me as a child as much as the drinking and driving episode of Full House. That one was so, they oh. You know which one My really God. really got me? What? The one where Stephanie's uh, classmate is being abused by his dad. Oof. That one's in like season six, I think. That one's probably my favorite episode because it's one of those. Well, what about the one where Stephanie's starving herself? That's DJ. Oh, DJ. That's yes, the one DJ. DJ starving good. himself. Oh, man. Uh, the one where Stephanie's classmate's being abused. Like all of them kind of like, you know, they have like the whole storyline throughout the middle, uh, throughout the episode. And then they have that little like mm -hmm. that touching lesson right at the end. Yeah. And then it ends funny. That was the only, like, one of the only ones I think that doesn't end funny. Like, it ends on that kind of lowish note, and it was so sad. Like, it was just like, even as Man. like a little kid, I realized like, wow, I don't, I have it, I have it so like I'm blessed, but yeah. not everybody else is. I remember being a young child watching Full House on TV, and not even really understanding what alcohol was or what it does to you or anything like that. But boy, did I know you don't drink and drive. Yeah. Oh, my God. The way I will never forget DJ taking those keys from Kimmy mm. and crying at her because her mom was hit by a drunk driver. I will never forget. You know what's a fact about that? What? Is I think that's in like season seven or eight. It's in one of the later seasons. It is later. They're older. Yeah. Um, that's the first time they reveal. I was reveal, thinking that's the first time they reveal they how, reveal the, mom how the mom died. Yeah. Which 
stellar, right? Because the kids who are watching Full House probably were either around Stephanie or DJ's age mm-hmm. as they're watching it. And they're getting their license, if not coming up to be getting their license soon after or at the same time as DJ and Kimmy. And to have an episode like that where you've been attached to this family for so long, you've been wondering, like, what's gone on with the mom? Like, where's the mom? Mm-hmm. We obviously know she's dead, but, like, what happened? Was she sick? Nobody knows. <sighs> Drunk driver. Yeah. Oh, man. I was like... I, I think, was like a young kid just sobbing, yes. watching DJ sob, talk about her mom being hit by a drunk driver. And I was like, I will never drink and drive, which I never did and I <laughs> never will. But as a kid, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I will never yeah. do that. I think what made that it even more me. like just hit you right in the heart was the fact that they had never revealed how Mm -hmm. the mom died Mm. and so it's like okay that is go writing yeah so it's like dj is very passionate about this okay okay cool like she's smart she knows not to drink and drive okay Mm -hmm. we get it and then when she pulls out that line like that's how like she lost her mom to a drunk driver like wow like now now you really get it why she's so passionate and it just really brings the character just even more depth absolutely and then it's just like that's such a hard topic that it's realistic that the family would never talk about yeah. that because it's instant. And yeah. it's not, she was sick, it was hard, you have time to process it. Not that I'm saying that's a better way to lose a parent. I absolutely think there's no good way to lose a parent, yeah. 100%. But I'm just saying as the writers, it seems realistic that they would never talk about that because it would be too hard. They would never talk about car accidents or anything like that or the the way of drinking and driving until it was like, DJ was old enough to know what was going on. Yeah. And to then, oh, put that on her friend like that. Oh, man, that was good. Mm. That that show taught me so many good lessons about life. It really did. It, it, and I love that my yes. sisters love to watch that show. Yes, it's, it's honestly one of those shows that's so timeless. It really is. And I think, honestly, I loved, I, I, mean, I have still yet to finish it, but I, I, lo- I, did, I really did like Fuller House. Too cheesy for me. It was a little cheesy. But that was the one thing I missed about it was they didn't have a lot of those. That's what made Full House not cheesy. They made Fuller House a more serial. Yeah. Where it was just continuous and following kind of the same storyline. And then a few episodes here and there, they'd have that that lesson in there. Yeah, the little tiny arc. uh, One of my favorite episodes of Full House (laughs) is when Stephanie drives the car through the kitchen. I love through that episode. Kitchen? Through How's the kitchen? How's it in the backyard? Um, I don't. Okay, so they're okay. That whole layout of that house is just so weird. I've never been able to understand. Or is it, it through but... the kitchen, this side by the stairs? Because I do think there's maybe a no. It's in the way. backyard. Backyard. Yeah. Kitchen. So Joey gets this new nice car. Like he is obsessed with it, and he take he he's like cleaning it and everything. And he le- he notices there's a nick in the car, and so he goes. He takes Comet and he goes to go. Uh, take comment for a walk as he goes to the body shop and gets a little jar of touch-up paint mm-hmm. and stephanie's in the the car pretending like she's going for a drive how and old everything. is she 12 she, 11 no she's probably she's still little so i'm gonna say so this is early season this is early season so this is like two or three okay so she's because, like maybe eight or nine yes because uh becky and and, and jesse aren't married yet okay she run because what happens is she goes she goes to like she's going for a drive but she needs the radio on well, she pulls the the prindle mm-hmm. and puts it into the drive, prindle. and then second Cody reference if you didn't get that. Go back. Um, and then she puts it into drive, and it drives through the kitchen, and so she's freaking out. I think Michelle comes in and like sees her, and Michelle's still very little. Um, and so then she runs away. She goes to run away, and she has one of her friends who's picking her her their parent their mom picks them up for like dance class or something, and then just drops her off, which I don't. How do you just entrust somebody with your kid and then they just drop them off somewhere and they tell them to? But she told him to drop them off at Aunt Becky's house, soon to be Aunt Becky's house. And she's like, I just wanted to come say goodbye because I'm running away. And she wouldn't tell Becky why she was running away. But then at that point, Jesse stops by and they hide her in the closet. And she like... Uh, Jessie. Why Aunt Becky hide her in the closet? Because she, or I, I, I don't think she, Aunt Becky hid her in the closet. I was like, I think she just ran into the closet and was like, "Don't tell her I'm, don't tell him I'm in here." Okay. And so, and at that time, the, the like the B storyline was that like Jesse thought um, Becky was like, like, like crushing on this dude that was on the talk show or something. Mm. And so she, he see, he like hears wrestling in the in the closet, and he goes to open it. And he's like, "This dude's in here," blah blah. 
and oh that's funny and he she's not in the closet when he walks in but then he turns around and she's hanging from a coat that's hanging oh, okay, on the okay. door i've and it's definitely just, seen that boom. scene before but then the whole Her time in the coat yes yeah. and then the whole time so uh back at the house uh michelle it, like runs up to the girls room and kimmy and dj are in there and she goes there's a car in the kitchen <laughs> and they don't believe her and so then they walk in and into the kitchen and they're like there's a car in the kitchen. She goes, I told you. That's what I was saying. And then they go and they tell, uh, uh, I think Danny comes home at that point and they come in and they kind of distract him. And she's like, hold on, hold on. DJ runs in there and they're all right, I'm ready for you. And he comes in and then boom, sees the car in the kitchen, takes a little Polaroid picture of him. It was funny. And then Joey comes back and then they don't know. Then they realize that they don't know where Stephanie's at. Until Jesse brings her home. And they so, always be like, they always did a really good job of like, I don't hate you. I'm not mad at you. But like you messed up. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly and what that one you. was. Yeah. And they were very grace filled. You can't. Yeah, they were. And it was never like, it was the whole like, oh, my dad's going to kill me. And sometimes it was that initial blow up. of, Oh, my God, I can't believe you this or that. And then it always, always ended up being so grace filled and mm-hmm. so forgiving and I just loved that about Full House. And it is definitely a show that I would let future nieces and nephews oh, sure. and I actually all been, of them I've watch. been wanting to rewatch it because I haven't watched it in so long. You will learn some valuable lessons. Will. You will. will. Let's see. Does any of your favorite shows ever switch showrunners? The Office switches showrunners. Office. Yeah. Um, I know for sure that The Office does. I don't. One Tree Hill never switches showrunners i don't think i think the main creator he who shall not be named because he's a oh yeah bad guy um it's always the worst when your favorite shows have bad creators man i know it is such they're like they're good creatively but bad it people is such a hard thing to deal with and especially listen to the podcast and stuff because it's like oh my god like the, they are right there is the, all of these great things about it but him He's terrible. That's and how the I fact feel. that this whole entire world came from his mind, yeah. but he's a he's a doucher. That's how I feel about like all the Nickelodeon shows, like Drake and Josh, Joey yep. 101, iCarly, Victoria's, all of, all of them. All of them came from that guy who was a total The creator. Pedo. Yeah. Of just all of them. All of them. And he's just a total jag. Super bad guy. That's the nicest way to put it. Yeah. Same kind of bad guys. Yeah. Um, the office switches, but they keep it in-house um, throughout. So it's... um. Greg Daniels until season five, I think. And I think in season five, um, the guy who plays Toby and then oh. one of and, and then one of the girl writers take over and they both co run it for a while. <sighs> Grace is gonna kill me for not remembering what <laughs> happens next. I know in like the last season I think it was the last season, one of the last seasons, Greg Daniels comes back in and, like, finishes it. So I'm pretty sure that he does, and he's the showrunner of season nine, but he left to go run um, Parks and Rec with Mike Schur. And so they went and they they went off and made Parks and Rec together, so he couldn't showrun both at the same time, so he moved on. But um, New Girl, I think, stays with their main writer the whole the whole series, but I'm not positive on that. I could, I could be wrong. I don't know anything about behind the scenes of Full House or Big Bang. Um, uh, Walking Dead, they switched showrunners, I think, four times. Dang, that's a lot. Yeah, it's the the original showrunner was from one and two, and then there was. Um, I thought the main, like the new main guy, I thought he started in three, but he didn't start till four. So there's another one in season three, and uh, Scott Gimple, who is now like the Walking Dead like chief guy like he's like the Kevin Feige of the mm-hmm. Walking Dead universe. Um, he started in season four all the way to eight, and then Angela King, who had been like a writer and producer from season two, all the way up until takes over in season nine through the final season. And That's so. nice. I like it when there are writers on the show mm-hmm. and they move up to showrunner. Which, it just makes it make more sense. It's that thing of, like, when TV shows, each episode obviously has a different director, and that's a huge thing for TV shows. Um, Some TV shows don't, especially now that we're into 
like um, limited series or mm-hmm. short series. A lot of times the short series like Stranger Things or whatnot will keep the same director throughout. Um, but traditionally with TV shows, they have a different director each week. Um, so it's nice that they the people who show run are the ones that have been there throughout and they've mm-hmm. been running the story throughout and they know everything. Yes. Because sometimes directors can come in and they've only seen like one or two other episodes and then they are directing a whole episode, which a director on a TV show only has so much to say yeah. and do because the writers, the showrunner, even the actors have more know about what truly is going on. Yeah. That's what I love about The Walking Dead is even, like their directors or they have the, a lot of the same directors, maybe not in the same episodes, but a few episodes in the same season. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. that, and then they move on to the next season as well. Yeah. And then sometimes even the cast members direct will direct. Episodes. Yeah, yeah, that happens in One Tree Hill a lot where the cast members will will direct um, in the office. They will have a lot of repeat directors especially they'll come in and direct specific episodes like um paul feig will come in and direct like a lot of their huge big hitter episodes that are like really important and they really want him to like come in and curate them like they know that's how walking dead is they have greg nicotero who's actually also does all like the costume design special effects like he he designs all the walkers and stuff like that on walking dead that's fun and he's i think he i believe he directs the last episode that comes out next week what is the most disappointing show you've ever seen? Most disappointing? Oof. I know mine straight off the bat. You go first. 100% maybe. all my money, Riverdale. Oh, All my money's on Riverdale for the most disappointing show ever. And I don't watch it currently. Haven't watched it since season three. Season one was strong. Season, season one, one was very was good. Perfect. And I've never watched anything other than season, season one. Season one was Perfect, I feel like so good. I feel like season. I think I feel like Riverdale was one of those. It could have been a one season show. Could have should have been, been a one season, season show. show. Especially since half the it cast don't even so enjoy it anymore. Freaking good. And I'll see TikTok clips. Oh, nowadays, it's horrible. And I'm like, what in the actual world is going on here? On I don't the, on Riverdale. I don't understand CW. Because you I better also watch your mouth because well, One Tree Hill is from CW. Current CW. Okay. okay. Because that is what Riverdale is on. Yes. Yeah. So is The Flash. And I see a lot of yeah, bad things Flash, from The Flash as the well. The Flash is a huge disappointment as well. It started off really good, yes. really strong. And a lot of theirs, I think, is like just decisions in yeah. production that yeah. seems really bad. Like the CGI seems really bad yeah. and stuff. I didn't finish that show either. It's, it's a it's a bad thing. That's the, it's one of the bad things about having a TV show about like The Flash, like mm-hmm. that kind of show on a, on a, on a network. Because your CGI budget is not that great, but it used to be way it better. Did. It did, and then I think they, I guess, chose they should have their, just ended. They it. didn't budget, right? I remember when I used to go to Comic Con. Nerd alert! I did I've go to Comic Con a few Con times. Really we should go. go. We should go to Comic Con. Let's do it. Except for Walking Dead won't be there anymore. Well, they have the spinoffs, so I'm pretty okay. sure there'll be. There's like three, spin- four spinoffs. We used to go to spin-offs. Walking Dead, and the main highlight we would go to was the CW panel. That was like the one because it was like we weren't super into Marvel stuff and like that everyone was into that. The Star Wars, everyone was there for that. But we were there for the CW. Nice. The Supergirl, the Flash, Arrow, all of that. Riverdale was on there. That's the very first place I ever saw Riverdale nice. was on the panel. And now it's just such a disappointment. Yeah. I never finished any of those shows. No. All of them. I, I never I, finished. I loved Arrow the first two seasons. And then so I started good. watching season three a little bit. What stopped me from watching those shows is when they started crossing over and you'd have to it's watch so you'd have crazy. to watch one half of a you season. You have to watch and then, Flash, Supergirl, yes. Arrow, and Legends. It's like they have this DC huge crossover event. Like they aired in one week. Yeah. They all aired on different like Tuesday, Wednesday, yep. Thursday. The you they'd all air in one week, but they'd air as an episode of each of the show. Yep. So then you have to watch like all season three. Like it happens in episode eight of Arrow. So you'd have to watch season three, episodes one through seven, then watch eight, and then watch like season two of Supergirl or The Flash mm-hmm. all the way up to that episode before you yeah. can even watch the entire And I understand thing. what they were trying to do was to bring in some of their smaller shows mm-hmm. and make them part of the more popular shows, but they really just ruined their entire, yeah. their entire family of shows. They yeah. ruined all of them. What they should have done was just 
honestly, I don't know. I feel they like they should have just guest starred. Yes, Supergirl on Flash. Yes, but have nothing to do with the Flash storyline be on Supergirl, yes. so you don't have to go watch it. That's and what they even, wanted like, to do. You can even like mention that after the fact on their other on their shows but not make that a part of their story like they were trying to make it a part of three different shows storylines it was ridiculous so huge mistake but yeah riverdale absolute trash did you think of one um i can't really think of a show that i watched that was just kind of there's just you know sometimes you just get so excited for a show and then it's just a huge okay you know what this may be controversial go for it because it's Marvel. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I was Soldier not the biggest sucked, fan of Fa- Falcon but, and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, no. Which is sad because I love both of those characters, uh-huh, but I did sucked. not like the show. Yeah. Absolutely. And it really sucked because Emily uh, Van Camp really was in that. there. Mm, I do love her. We do be loving revenge. revenge. Let me just tell you guys who are watching the Film Bluffs podcast right now, we love revenge. And we will probably do a whole episode on revenge because we love it. And that show did not let down. It did not. That show is solid through and through. It did not. I could. The CGI I will say, is terrible, yes. but it is solid. I will through say through. it could have had just a little bit better finale. But other than that, it still doesn't yeah, disappoint. True. It true, doesn't true, true, true. disappoint. Should we hear from one of our advertisers? Yes. Let's hear from an ad. You pick first. <laughs> why 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 tennis why why tennis so do you enjoy spending time with why why i sure as heck love to spend time with why why do you enjoy playing tennis i have played tennis <laughs> well get ne- get ready for this because why why is making his own tennis league why why tennis why why tennis why why tennis camp tennis camp taught by why why himself he is going to sit there and teach you in-depth techniques about tennis, about the rackets, how they're made, how tennis balls are made. He'll cut into one. He'll throw one. He'll chase it. He loves it. Why Why Tennis Camp is the camp to sign up for. And tell them about the deal they get if they sign up right now for Why Why Tennis Camp. If you use our code FILMBLUFFS10 when you sign up for Why Why Tennis Camp, then you will get $5 off of your camp funds tuition i don't know what camp is called but camp fee camp fee and one free tennis ball one free tennis, one free ball, tennis ball and five dollars off of your purchase if you choose to go to yy tennis camp right now so don't miss out on and this sign up opportunity quick because slots are filling up fast we are going to be there at yy tennis camp so you come down meet us at the film bluffs pod session at yy tennis camp don't miss out why why tennis camp check it out and we're back and we're back i think it's time we introduce them to our favorite segment that we're gonna have it is called the fish bowl of terror fish bowl of terror actually that's not what it's called i just came up with that right now working title we're gonna call it I have no idea. We're going to come up with a name at some point. But it is a mock debate where we are going to pick out a genre of TV show from this bowl. We have all of these. So many. Check out these if you, genres. If you have any genre recommendations, throw we it in the comments. all the genres that Wikipedia had on their <laughs> thing. And so we're going to pick one out and we're going to debate whose genre is better solely based off of what we pick and i'm actually kind of nervous i'm kind of nervous what if i pick a bad one okay (laughs) i'll go first okay you go oh yeah okay (laughs) okay (laughs) i got cooking show (laughs) i got dramedy (laughs) dramedy heck yeah okay okay should we place a timer of how much time you have to like place your let's do it argument who goes first? I don't know. I wish we had a coin. I have a coin. I have a dollar. Well, I picked first, so I feel like you should have to go first. Shoot. Okay. How long you want? One minute? Two minutes? I think normal debates are like two minutes. Two minutes? <laughs> okay. You have two minutes, and our timer theme is the themes from Park and Recreation. Okay, ready? Dramedy. Go. All right, so how can you go wrong with the dramedy all right so it's like the best of both worlds it's like you want some drama in your life but you don't want to be involved in it everybody likes drama okay i don't care who you are 
you like some drama, but you don't like being involved in it. You watch a drama. But sometimes the drama just gets a little too much. It's a little overwhelming. So you have some comedy in there. Some very hard topics that they're talking about in the dramedy. Boom. Throw in a joke. Make it laugh. Make it giggle. Make it chuckle if you want to. It's just amazing because it's the best of both worlds. Like I said. What are dramedies? Name some. That's a good question. Um, you know, it's not about names. Um, but it's about the concept. It's about what they're about. Mm-hmm. Right? It's about what the inside. All right. It's about the name that they make for themselves. It's about the words that were on that piece of paper. <laughs> the words that that piece of paper said. But they are not defined by that name on that piece of paper. So, you know, again, if you want to laugh, and even if you want to cry, sometimes you just need a good cry, but you can't cry on your own. You need a drama. You just tug at those heartstrings. You can watch a dramedy. Are you done? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. Okay. That one was hard. Can I get like cartoon or something? Tell me a bad cooking show because I'll tell you there's not a bad cooking show. And if there is a bad cooking show, it's a great cooking show because it's hilarious. <laughs> I will tell you right now, every single cooking show I've ever seen has taken me on a journey, whether it is a season long cooking show where it's every episode someone gets eliminated or it's a episodic cooking show where every episode someone wins money. Or it's a lifestyle cooking show where an older lady in her mid 40s not older lady in her mid 40s, a lady in her 50s or 60s decides to teach you her family recipes from when she was growing up or maybe that she just made up. Every single one takes you on a journey. You've got highs and lows. If you want something to make you feel on the inside, I dare you to watch MasterChef Junior. I dare you. Those six-year-olds will cook better than I ever imagined in my entire life. And I will never even eat those flavors anyway. But I want to. And I hate flavors. And I want to. And let me tell you something about one of the best shows I've ever seen in general. Out of all the shows. Cutthroat Kitchen. Cutthroat Kitchen is cutthroat, man. But it is funny. And it is hilarious. And that is the same thing, but it is that. <laughs> Basically, they get all this money, and they get to freaking throw challenges at each other. They have to cook with one arm. And then they get to keep whatever money is left. Or you go chopped, and you have all of these random ingredients and all of these things. And you're watching them, you're like, how are they going to use dipping Dots to make spaghetti? And they do it. They do it. Cooking shows are the best of all the worlds. Because who's not a fan of cooking shows? Americans are and Britons are. And there's nothing that we agree with ever except for cooking shows. And I think I win. If we're scoring on passion, it's Brooklyn. If we're scoring on actual scoring facts, on knowledge, it's also still Brooklyn. <laughs> and you know. If we're, scoring that- on, if we're scoring on effort. You didn't even get your full time. <laughs> You don't even know one dramedy. It's the best of all the world. <laughs> oh, I could really, I literally couldn't name one dramedy. I would argue Hannah Montana's a dramedy. You're literally sitting it's here a, saying it's a best of comedy. both worlds. <laughs> it's musical a musical com- comedy. Musical comedy wasn't in the thing though. Anyway, I feel like that was pretty fun. That I was liked pretty that. Fun. I also really do love cooking shows. I love Cutthroat Kitchen. We used to watch it all the time as a family. We'd be sucked in. I don't really watch much dramedies. It's either a drama or a comedy. It's not really both. Well, <laughs> most have both. Yeah. But I will say the things that I love about a sitcom comedy is that things might seem that they might go wrong, but they never do. They never do. Unless someone dies in real life. Yeah. Then that's sad. I know. Then, you, then eight, you have to like pull it in. And, and, oh. Oof. Yeah. Glee. Glee's not a sitcom, but that was a sad yeah, well. death. Finn Hudson. I remember the day I found out that that actor died. I was at church <laughs> at the movie theater. We had church at the movie theater, and I saw it on my probably iPhone 4. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was with my friend Alyssa, Alyssa Ramirez, now Taruko. 
I hope I said that right. But we were at church. We were setting up for church and it said, Corey Monteith dead. I was like, what? This can't be real. This has to be fake. It's like the, what was that? Uh, Jennifer Aniston, where everyone said that she was dead and she wasn't dead. People said Jennifer Aniston was dead. It was a long time ago. It was oh, fake wow. Jennifer Aniston dead. I was pretty sure it was her. Um, I thought it was fake. It was real. And then I cried. I cried when, In when Fit Hudson died. Oh, when, when okay. Yeah, it was really yeah. sad. Mm. And then I didn't watch Glee ever again because <laughs> I really didn't care about it that much. That's the thing that you do for your friends. Alyssa loved Glee, so I watched Glee with her. It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't all right. very good, but I've watched it. So it's on the list that I've watched. Glee. Check. And Melissa Benoist was in Glee. <laughs> Supergirl herself was in Glee. Which that has a really great spinoff show ish reality show that we can talk about later. We do want to do segments on different types and genres of shows. Yes. Throughout and talk about them. This one was kind of just an introduction. Wait, this to- isn't a podcast where I can just talk about Walking Dead the whole time? Actually, no. Dang it. I'm going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> We what talk about Walking about? Dead and One Tree Hill for this episode, and we'll we'll talk about it a little bit in other episodes. We'll oh, talk about it when you, when your show ends. We'll talk about <gasps> it for you next week. <laughs> Wait, next week it's yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. This well, Sunday, then, no. We this Sunday I have it. a this Sunday I have a break. I have no new episode this Sunday, and then next week I have the finale. That is devastating. I, I hate binging a show and you don't realize it's almost over, and then all of a sudden it's over, and it's like, what are you watching next? And I'm like, I know. what? Like I don't have a show that I watch up to current. Like, I just watch reruns. I don't either right now. The last one that I watched ever since the beginning was This Is Us. So I watched This Is Us from the very first week it came on, and it ended this last year. And that's the last show I watched since the beginning that still runs. I was doing a million reasons, a million things, a million little things. A a million little things sounds right. I don't even know. A million little things. I watched that one from the beginning weekly, but I just wasn't into it anymore, and... It was kind of too depressing, and one time Caitlin watched it, and she got she binge watched one of the seasons. She got really depressed. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm calling you out on this podcast, Caitlin, but she got Caitlin. really depressed. And I was like, I think you have to stop watching a million little things. <laughs> That's gonna be funny. We're gonna be at work one day when this comes out. She's gonna be watching that. We're just gonna hear this laugh, this hackle in the in the. Office. You want to know something funny? She she was watching criminal minds and the pray now alert came up <laughs> while she was watching criminal minds and i said maybe you need to pray against your obsession with criminal minds i'd be walking up on that girl and i'd be like trying to pause her phone and it's like criminal minds criminal yeah. minds and she's which like, i can't say anything because it's always walking dead here with was me, her but. defense well i don't listen to it anymore i'm actually watching it this time <laughs> listen to criminal minds like it's a podcast criminal minds <laughs> She's watched that, that show so many times. Nuts! We're doing a whole bit on Caitlyn right now because that girl is crazy. <laughs> I will listen to like it's a show, like it's a podcast, The Office or Parks and Rec or Brooklyn Nine Nine or something I've seen a million times that is uplifting. New Girl, Criminal Minds. See, no. I, I take that back. I, I can't. I do the same thing with Walking Dead. Not that I just listen to it, but I can go off and do other things and just have it like I'd be listening to it and know exactly what had happened, I, especially is, the earlier seasons. Is it as dark as Criminal Minds though? I mean, like it's a serial killer every week on Criminal Minds. I mean, kind of dead people eating people. So yeah, but of. it's way more fictional. It's like sci-fi. It's true, true. It's more fictional. Sky-fi. It can't really happen. Sky-fi. Have you seen Skippy. um, Sing Two? No. Oh, I haven't you even seen Sing One. You don't deserve to be here right now. Well, I couldn't define a dramedy either. So I yeah, mean, we've already proven double that. Double don't deserve <laughs> to be here. Let's do an ad. I want a good one. I don't want to see. Let's see what this one is. Oh, yeah. I got the good one. Now you pick one. Okay. Unless it's mommy. If it's mommy, it has to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it is mommy. <laughs> we didn't know what was in here. It's mommy again. <laughs> Throw mommy aside. Mommy. Kiwi. <laughs> Kiwi booty. <laughs> Come on. Mommy, Mommy booty. booty. <laughs> oh. Kiwi booty.com. 
Here's the thing about KiwiBooty.com. KiwiBooty.com is a really great website. And it sounds like a really terrible, nasty, dirty website. But actually what it is, is it tells you, you go in, you select all the fruits that you have in your fridge that maybe you think that you might not finish. You know, like you get a meldy of, a meldy? A medley? Medley. A medley of fruit, like a group of fruit. And you're like, you have some mangoes left. You have some strawberries left. KiwiBooty.com tells you what kind of smoothie you can make Mm. and what you need to add to that smoothie to make sure that you use up all of the fruits in your fridge before they go bad. That is really fascinating. That's way different than what I thought it was going to be. I'm telling you, they really just turn your old fruits into booty. They just really throw you off. The thing is, is that you take the butt end of your fruits, the booty, Mm -hmm. you take the booty of your fruits, the leftovers, you'd be like, uh, no. And you turn them in to energy to grow your booty to go to the gym oh <laughs> that's not actually what they say but i think that's what i think is that's good. What, I, I feel like that's what kiwibooty.com go there put in all your fruits that you have left half a banana three sliced blueberries because why it sometimes doesn't finish all of his blueberries three sliced blueberries you have four strawberries in the freezer You have some mango left. It tells you, okay, use one of your mangoes, use three of your pineapples, put them all together, a little kiwi. You've got yourself a mango banana smoothie. (laughs) Mango banana smoothie. Kiwibooty.com. And if you sign up today using our, you might think it's Film Bluffs 10 again, but it's not. It's actually Film Bluff Booty 10. Film Bluff Booty 10 code, you actually get 10 months free. Wow. 10 months free access to KiwiBooty.com. By the time you get charged for using KiwiBooty.com, it's going to become a part of your daily, your daily and By the time usage. you get charged, if you don't have a Kiwi Booty, I what know. have you been doing? You've been get doing it Kiwi wrong. Kiwi Booty, except for I don't like Kiwi Booty because I want fruit. <laughs> I need like leftover chicken booty. <laughs> Alyssa oh, Bacon Chicka Booty. Alyssa Chicka Booty Bacon. Well, I think that's all we got for this week. That is all we have on our very first episode of Film Bluffs Pod. I actually really think that I like this setup more than what we were going to do. I really liked what we were going to do. I was really excited about, about we were gonna get, what we were going to get, what we were going to want to do. Going to want 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 I was really excited about what we were going to do, but I think I'm excited more about yeah. this. More conversation. More conversation. More conversation. More heat. More bits. We will be having guests, so keep an eye out for our special guest appearances. But for now, for all you lovely dogs out there, DM us for a picture all you of your mommy mommies. bears. <laughs> nope. Denisa, Denisa. Nope. Don't DM no, no. picture you. <laughs> Hold on. For all you lovely dogs out there, DM us a picture of your mommy wrestling a bear for t- eating her chili. No. That's what it is. That's what it is. DM us that. No. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> to all you lovely dogs and mommy bears out there, stay safe and warm because it's a little chilly out tonight. Mm, suck on that, Caterade. I still like mommy bears. <laughs> Don't <laughs> pick any pictures of no mommies wrestling <laughs> nothing. Bears! <laughs> it's all wholesome. Is it? The bear stole her chili. This ain't Goldilocks. Half of us is Goldilocks. That's right. You are very white. All right. We're done. <laughs> we'll say see you next week, but who knows when we'll actually be back. Could be next month. Could be two months from now. Could be this time next could year. Could be one year. Could be two years. Could be three years. Could be four years. You don't understand that reference because it's from the office. Oh, you didn't even say anything. Well, you were supposed to say could be. Could be. I was trying to One remember. Year? I was trying to remember my lines. Two years? Instead, you just sat there looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. All right. We are out of here. Thank you for joining us on Film Bluff Pod. Sorry it was really long. We just really love to talk about film and TV. It was y'all's fault for giving us a mic. Thanks so. for the hangs. <laughs> I think that's how I want to end. Thanks for the hangs. Thanks for the hangs. Just like completely change my personality. Thanks for the hangs. <laughs> Thanks for the hangs. Like cuts and you're like in pigtails. <laughs> Thanks for the hangs. <laughs> Today, Kylie put my hair in a claw clip. <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs>